Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our podcast with me, your host, DJ Pink Shoelace. And today, I'm with... Yanni. That's... Nice to meet you, Laurel. Wow. And... Okay. Brett. Brett. What's up, guys? What's up? So, Yanni, what is... What are we going to be talking about today? Okay, so today uh, we had a very we have a very last second podcast. So I whipped up ten thought provoking questions to ask your best friend, and we're going to be going through all ten of them. And then uh, DJ Pink Shoelace here has a bonus eleventh question that I'm excited to get into. Twelve. A twelfth question too. Interesting. And, and uh, Brett, do you do you have you came up with a question? Yeah, got anything cooking in the oven? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nothing. That's cool. That's okay. If if you come up with one, spit it right out. <laughs> yeah. So I guess without further ado, here are my ten thought provoking questions that I thought of in like five minutes. Let's just r- jump right into it. Number one. All right. Number one question is: What is one trait that you admire in other people? It could be. Uh, confidence it could be anything really it's just one quality that maybe you don't have personally that you wish you could have and admire in other people let's start with you pink okay okay <laughs> shining the spotlight on me thank you a trait assuming a trait that i don't have right yes okay a trait that i admire in other people that I don't have is is the now these are the questions the real questions out there and I'm gonna be honest and I'm gonna say I don't know because people out there with their traits or whatever and me admiring them I guess it would be like People who, like, stick to their goals, like, de- dedication type of people. Like, go-getters. Like, people who have a goal in mind and do all it takes to reach that goal. So you think that's a very admirable trait? Yes. That's cool. Also, yeah, these questions are designed to make you think, and especially when you're on the spot right now, you're going to be blanking a lot. Uh, we can always edit those, edit it out later if you got to think real hard, but that's the point. That's the fun of the podcast. So you're going to be stuck with these heavy-hitting questions. You have no idea how to answer, and you just got to answer them on the spot. First thing that comes to mind. Joe Biden. Joe ne- Biden. Next up, Brett. So what questions do I have? Um... It's what is one <laughs> trait that you admire in other people, and why? Oh, Wow, well, that's a question you're asking me. Yeah. What is one trait to admire in other people? That you don't have. That I don't have. Um I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't really know. <laughs> Here, think about this. This might uh, help you narrow down your answer. So think of somebody that you really admire, like a celebrity or like a big brother or somebody in your life who you admire. And think about why do you admire this person? What is it about them that makes you drawn to them? I mean, you look at uh, what's his name, Jason Statham. You know, he's uh, he's a good fighter. I mean, he's, he's a good actor. You know, um, you know, I watched you know a lot of his movies. I know there was one of them, The Transporter. That was uh, probably one of my favorites. So, but why? I don't know. I mean, I think he's I think he's a good actor. I mean, he, he he's good at fighting. You know, he's. Uh, I mean, he's yeah. So I guess that might be talent. Yeah, I guess so. Or I guess like uh, the ability to like stick with something and keep training until you uh, like like has like uh. It's more, like it's, more like it's more like he has like his own character, I guess you know, and that's that's what I admire about that is like the character that he ha- that he plays. Like he's a good actor. Yeah. All right, interesting. So we got talent and the ability to pursue your goals without giving up. I guess they would call that determination. I guess. Something along the lines with determination, dedication, compassion, and all that kind of stuff. And good work work ethic. What about you? Me. Okay, if I had to answer this, I would say 
stoicism. I had to double check the meaning of it there. But um, so the direct definition of stoicism is I'm going to pull up the Google right here. A person who is who can endure pain or hardship without showing their feelings or emotions. But mainly what I mean are like people who don't crack under pressure, people who don't let the daily stresses get to them, people who can just stay stoic and like like a rock. Like they're sturdy, nothing can get by them. I think that's a very admirable thing because personally, I stress about everything and anything, honestly. Like I got these daily stresses that get to me constantly. I... I am the epitome of weak mental strength, and stoicism is what I strive to be. I think that's like the best trait in a person, personally. That is what I look for. So you want to hide your uh, fear? Um, I mean, more like, not really hide it, but just don't let it bother me. Don't let it get to me. Like, if something really stressful happens from dealing with something, I could just like not care. I could look at it logically and not freak out emotionally. That is like what it means to be stoic. That doesn't feel human to me. Maybe not. I mean, I I guess I guess everyone feels stress at some point, but I guess some people can just uh, handle the uh the fire a bit better than others. That that will be like saying I wish I had the ability that if I was set on fire, I wouldn't be able to feel pain. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Like a rock. Well, I should have just said I should. I, I want to be a rock. There you go. A stone. Cool. <laughs> All right. Next question. All right. So our next question, our next question here is, if you were on a desert island all alone and all your basic food, water, survival equipment is provided for you. You don't have to hunt. I mean, well, you do. But all that survival stuff, covered. You're fine. But you're allowed to bring one thing with you. What is that thing? And see, it's more of a question of what is that one thing that you value in your life more than anything else that isn't survival? My cat. What's his name? Lemon. You bring your cat Lemon. Because my cat, he's, he, uh, I'm going to be honest, my cat is very useless. I don't think I'm going to progress much in being in a survival island with my cat. In fact, I would survive less because I would have to sacrifice food for him. But my cat provides me with emotional support and loves me. So, and I love him. And he's my baby. So I would bring him. And I, I don't want to be in a survival island knowing that I'm far away from my cat. That's a good answer. <laughs> Lemon. Yeah, what kind of cat is he? Or she? Fluffy cat. Fluffy cat. Fluffy lemon. He's fluffy. Like, he looks like he's fat, but he's mostly just hair. <laughs> okay. So the, the giant sentient hairball that is Lemon. Yes. What about you, Brett? Well, uh, I gotta give this some really hard thought. Okay, so what was the question again? Just to <laughs> make sure. So, you're on a survival island. All your food necessities and survival are covered for you, but you can bring one thing with you. What is that thing, and why? Yeah, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> I think I just bring a car with me. A car. Yeah. But your issue there is you bring the car, but you didn't specify to bring the gas. What if it's just like I mean, and we're gonna drive to. If you're on an island, we're gonna drive around. I guess around the island, but there are no roads, so it would have to be like an off, uh, an off. Gr I don't know what the term is. Off-road car, I believe. An SUV or something. An SUV. Do, like, would you want like a really fancy car? So you can just be like driving around the island in style, impressing all those monkeys. Or what about a jet ski? A jet ski. But but if you're on an island, there's ATV. no snow. You got an ATV. A TV. ATV. You know what that is? What's that? It's like those uh, those four wheelers. 
Oh, I thought you said for a second. I thought you said A T V. A television. Yeah, A T V. It's called A T V. Yeah. All right. So, so what is it again? I I I was what? It's like a four. It's it's a four wheeler. Four wheeler car. Well, it's not really a car. It's more like a. It's a. You drive it around the beach. You know, on sand. Yeah, that sounds cool. Play some like vaporwave. Put on some sunglasses. S- drive around at sunset. Sounds fun. So. My answer would be, honestly, just a person to talk to. If I had nobody, I would lose my mind. I would have no one to talk to. I'd freak out. And I can't exactly say a cell phone, because if I had a cell phone with no internet on an island, I would be screwed. So just bring, like, my best friend or something. Some dude. It could be anyone. It could be a stranger, for all I know. I just hope I get along. And get along. Okay, I have another answer to that question. If... And I can only bring one thing, right? Yes. And it's a survival island in the middle of the ocean. Yes. Like, in the in the complete middle of the ocean, right? A- absolute like middle po- of nowhere. Like Point Nemo. Point Nemo. Okay. What if I brought with me one thing, and that one thing is a boat? So that's I can smart. escape the island. That's a good, that's a good answer. And you have all your survival equipment ready, so you don't need to stay on the island. You got your food, you got your water, you got your whatever you need. And it could be like, okay, this is your one like request. It could be, it could be like a giant like party boat for all you know. I'll bring one cruise ship with me, please. A whole cruise ship to Disneyland. The Disneyland cruise ship. Definitely. That'd be amazing. I mean, if Brett can bring a car, I don't see why I can't bring a boat. Definitely. You got you got that one request, you use it for a bow, that's perfect. Yo, that, that puts my friend Jerry to shame. <laughs> wow. A boat in a car. W- what did he wish for? What did Jerry wish for? Technically I what what if I what if I just bring like ten people and then all those ten people could have their ten requests and then I have like eleven requests right there. And I could get whatever I want. Technically. But technically, you can only bring one per person, so 10 is, is, is over the limits. I would say it w- I would make one request of 10 people. It's a single request. But it's, I can say I want a single request of 600 million things, and there all of these go. things are different. There you go. You managed to cheat the system. All right, so you, f- you found a loophole in my question. Good job. Congratulations. On to the next one. And this time, Brett is going to be the first one to answer it. Good idea. <laughs> so our second question is, so I'm at a very awkward angle right now. I have to really squint and see the computer for this question. Um, one second. All right. If you could have but one wish of anything you want, what would that wish be? Brett. To to go back in time. So where would you go? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks. So why? Why a couple weeks ago? I don't. I don't want to get too specific, but. Uh, Maybe done some choices that I would that I regret now. So. All right. So you want to like go back and like, uh, change all the bad decisions you think you made in your life and change up those gre- regrets. That's a, that's a good answer. It's more like a. Uh, it's more like fix some problems I had that should have been fixed a long time ago. So. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, procrastination is never a good idea. And then one day, if you're just tired of this generation, you'll be like, oh, screw it, Let's see some dinosaurs. Trial back in time. Yeah. Meet a pharaoh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what about you, at Shoelace? Mr. Shoelace. Mr. Shoelace. Would you wish for another pair of shoelaces? I have many. I don't need more. So. A giant shoebox house. That would be unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> unbearable. <laughs> yeah, think of, think of the smell. It would be awful. Yum. <laughs> okay. So... One wish I would have 
And that wish could be anything, right? Real yes. or not real. Anything. Would it be to eradicate your worst fear? Shoes without laces? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not, hold. Not gonna lie, but Velcro, Velcro shoes are kind of dope. They kind of are, honestly. I used to wear a lot of those, actually. I might rename myself to Pink Velcro. Pink Velcro. That'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, you could have like uh, one podcast, like like one series is Pink Shoelace, then like a series on the side about something else called Pink Velcro. That's a possibility. So one thing I can wish for anything. Yes. I guess. It would be so I can have myself, like You're like two of me, like a clone of you. Yes, so that way I can do double as much work in one day. That's a good idea. And also, I would be there to motivate myself to get out of bed every morning. <laughs> but then, who would be there to motivate your other self to get out of his bed in the morning? Me. <laughs> would you guys like work in shifts yes I go to school tomorrow you go to school today maybe you wake up your clone to wake you up as you go back to sleep so he could wake you up later that's a good one <laughs> that'd be a good idea that's what I want you, you could be like your, your, your co-host too you could both uh, like do a, a session together that would be cool. That would be cool. But what if, okay, what if, though, this clone is literally a clone of you, as in, like, he thinks everything you're thinking, he says everything you're saying, every time you want to you want to say something, he says the exact same thing, and it's like speaking to a mirror. That'd be a bit of a nightmare. But due to the butterfly effect, that wouldn't be the case. Because Think. let's say I'm to the left and he's to the right. By only that... Our paths are automatically different. At least, like, the theory of, uh... The theory of that. I guess so. Like, I, I guess, I don't know, if you tell him to raise his right arm, he's gonna raise it in a different position than you? I, I don't know. Wait, so, like, like, what do you mean by that? But, because the butterfly effect is, like, anything that happens, no matter how insignificant... Is correlating to a huge impact. So even if I was like three feet to the right, my decisions might be a little bit more different than if I was right here. And that's a theory because there's no way to prove that, but I believe in that. That's interesting. That could make some sense. I like I like to imagine it more like in my cartoony brain, you guys are constantly synced. And like you guys have to like try to unsync each other. So like you'd pick up a rock and hope he doesn't have a rock next to him, and like throw it at him or something to desync you two. Something goofy like that. I don't know. Having a clone would be wild because it's literally exact same thoughts, exact same movement, exact same words, exact same everything. It'd be a little nutty. That would be interesting. It would be. That's one. That's one idea. What about you? Actually, you already answered it. He did. What would you do with a clone of yourself? One of myself. Yeah. I'd have one part of myself work in school, and another part of myself working elsewhere. Oh, so you can both. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. So let's say one of you can work full time, the other one can go to school for full time. So you 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 work a full time job and you get education. Yeah, so. Like that, yeah. And you could put that stuff on your resume. And you can you can just be like, yeah, that was me. Because it, it was you. So you could take all the credit for that. <laughs> be perfect. Yeah. You can have two jobs at the same time and make double the money. That's true. But double the money, but then double the people, double the mouths to feed. Unless your That's clone true. just doesn't need to eat. That's true. If you if you gotta deal with more if you have to deal with more people. Yeah, man. You got more problems. But but when it comes to rent and stuff like this, That's if, if one person can afford rent, then two people can afford rent and still be alive. That's a good idea. He's, the landlord's not going to tax you twice. He's going to be like, oh, it's just you again. Perfect. Yo, I would I would pull so much so many like shenanigans. Yo, I'd I'd go into a hotel room, book a hotel, walk away. My clone walks in, books the same hotel or something, or. Just mess with people in the street. That would be funny. Make them think of everywhere all the time. 
like I'm some some sort of omniscient being. being. I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. I'm literally everywhere. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Okay, so second que- uh, third question actually. Wait, or fourth question? <laughs> uh, let me check this. We are on, we are on question four. So this question is. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would that be? It could be on the inside. It could be on the outside. What is that one trait you would change? To be honest, I wouldn't change anything because I accept myself the way I am. That's a good answer, honestly. What about you, Brett? Um, I don't really have a specific answer for that. Nothing yet? So you guys are both pretty content with who you are? Yeah. Man. And I guess I have, like, a, like, my own, my own character, but, you know, I put it like that, but that's not very specific, so, to be honest, so, yeah. That's cool. So you're, you're just happy being you. Yeah. You see nothing to change or improve on. It's a very wise answer. I, for one, would I think I would genuinely just click that randomizer button and just roll those dice and be like anything. I I I wouldn't mind, yo. I have the complete opposite answer. Like just change me completely. I I hate myself. I mean, I don't really hate myself. I don't know. I uh, I'm not. I don't know. That's a good question, honestly. Um, that's a deep question for another day. I think I just I don't know. But would you? I'd be, still I'd be, be interested. You? Would I still be me? Okay, maybe I would keep what's inside, but I'd randomize the uh, the cosmetics. I'd the, the exterior would just be changed. Boom shakalaka, you're now Shrek. Exactly, <laughs> I'm now. I don't know. It could be like six foot ten, or I, I don't know. I, I I could look exactly like Pink Shoelace. We could be identical. That would be surreal. <laughs> Yo. That. That's that's I'm gonna be thinking about that all day. That's in my head now. Oh god. Up next. <laughs> Up next. So, once again, I have to curl my my body in, in an unnatural position so I can squint at the screen, and uh, not not. Yes. Okay, I like this question. We're gonna start off with Brett on this one. So Brett, if you could have any superpower. In the world, what would it be, and what would you use it for? Mm. I don't know. Uh, uh, flying? <laughs> no, you could just fly anywhere. I don't know. That'd be true. You would never have to pay a cent on uh, plane tickets. True, but yeah. you get people constantly after you, like for immigration. They be like, "Where did you fly out of? Where are you from, sir?" You, you would. But then you can fly away. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Evaded. Perfect. You can fly back to Canada, and then like the uh, the Russian police will be like, "Yo, where are you at?" I'm like, "Yo, I'm in Canada. I've never even left. What are you talking about? You're off your you're off your nut. How how could I? I didn't even purchase a plane ticket or anything. How how did I went I end up in in Russia?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one way. Yeah, what about you? I would love to say flight also, but the only problem with that is if I were to fly across borders, I would get shot. <laughs> well, why shot? Because there are places where, like, if you cross the border, it's like illegal or whatever. Oh, that's a good point. But it's, do like, you... that, it's like that everywhere. It's like that almost everywhere. So. Well. I but mean, I don't think um, some border security uh, guys could shoot an airplane out of the sky. If you're flying, like, airplane altitude, I think you should be but, fine. But that would be so cold. It and, would be. And you won't, you won't be able to breathe. Um, it might be a little hard to breathe, but I think it'd be all right. I don't know. Maybe. You can always bring a sweater. My, my other superpower, I'm, so, I'm going to skip on flight. Even though that sounds awesome, I'm going to go for teleportation. It, That's a better idea. It 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 solves the problem of having, because let's say I have flight, okay, 
and I want to go somewhere. I would go out of bed. I'm like, ugh, I have to fly to Michigan today. And then I go there, and then, ugh, I have to go to Russia tomorrow. Why I can just, you know what? I can go to Michigan right now. Boof. Yeah, you could, like, uh, if you're doing a stream and, and some, uh, like, fan likes your content, gives you a little donation, you could teleport, p teleport right to where they live, give them a little handshake, say thank you, give them a hug, fly back to your podcast, and, like, talk to your fans that way. Or, or maybe, like, like you know the, these videos were like, look behind you, I'm there. Oh, my God, you could be there all the time. But the thing is, I would need to hack for their location, because how am I going to know where they are? You can ask them. Like, hello, could you please tell me your exact coordinates? Minus three feet, so I, I don't, like, teleport inside of you. <laughs> On the stream, in front of everybody. Just dox your address for me, please. Yeah, I can't imagine you'd get much, uh, takers. <laughs> That's, like, you might as well be asking them what their credit card number is. I don't know, you can find out. You'd be a hacker. F figure it out. Tell us the name of your soulmate. The first name is your credit card number. The last name is the expiration date. And the middle name is the number on the back. <laughs> yes, write us a poem using only your credit card information. There you go. <laughs> that's how you get. That's how you get people to scam you. Yeah. Th that's how. You, that's how you get people to steal your account. Or like that. Like that dude. Uh, this pop popular meme guy who who like. He'll think of any kind of fictional series and be like, uh, attention all Stardust Crusaders. Dio needs your, your credit card information so he could so he could save the world or something. Voice over Pete. Is that his name? Voice over Pete? Yes. I attention love that guy. Attention all Fortnite g gamers. <laughs> um, little Timmy is trying to steal all of the games robux we just need your credit card information and we can s tell timmy's mom and stop little timmy from tattling by the way he got uh, banned be from fiverr because people were thinking that he's actually a scammer really oh my god like people were, were thinking that he's actually serious <laughs> poor guy oh that, that, that kind of sucks actually I heard this one dude, uh, I, I don't know where he's from, he's this ethnic gentleman, who will literally, he will say anything you want. You just pay him the money, he'll say it. He could say anything. It could be like, you know, initially it was for birthdays and, you know, or Merry Christmas or Happy New Year, I don't know, whatever, to like specific, specific people. But people just like immediately took advantage of that and use it for all sorts of goofy purposes. It, it's funny. Um, anyway, I got completely sidetracked. What was the question again? <laughs> it was uh, if you had a p superpower. Oh, yeah. So I've actually answered this question on our previous podcast. I mentioned mind reading so I could know what people think of me and probe their mind for information. Yes. Not for any nefarious purposes, but just curiosity. No. Um, for Yeah, not for bad things, but... I, I might want to get into mind reading, but if I could change that answer and think of something new now, I could control time so I could stop time and, like, spend 10 minutes thinking of a joke and I could always be the wittiest guy in the room. Perfect. But or, but, but but in my opinion, I don't think mind reading is going to work because it's like I believe that everyone thinks in their own language. So even if you were to mind read someone, you wouldn't understand anything because the way someone thinks is different than the way you think. But still, okay, if, if some guy who, who stinks walks up by you and, and you're thinking in your head, God, this guy reeks, are you thinking in your head, uh, like, utter gibberish ancient language? No, you're thinking in English. You're thinking, boy, this guy stinks. If I read your mind, I can hear you say, boy, this guy stinks, and I'll immediately know what you're, what you're, what you're trying to say. I mean, you're not thinking in Russian, or are you? Because, like, some people, they think with feelings. You think? Like, they, they don't... Like, Pun when, intended. When, uh, when you meet someone for the first time, they don't usually think, or at least I'm speaking for myself, because I, I've never mind-read before. 
<laughs> it sounds like I have experience in mind reading when I'm saying that. But it's, it's not like they're thinking, wow, this person stinks. It's they have the emotion of pain when they, <laughs> when they <laughs> or, smell you. Or, yeah, or like disgust. That's a good, that's good, actually. It's not like people monologue their entire, you know, everything that they do. You don't just walk on the street thinking, I'm walking left, right, left, right, left, right. Or some evil evil v- villain or, uh, I don't know, he's not walking on the street and, and, and renaming his entire nefarious plot in his head. You'd, you'd probably have to ask him and then read his mind. I mean, normally he's just blank. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good answer. Didn't really think about that. Because the mind is a complicated organism and, and uh, it's... it's it would be it would be painful to mind read at least i i believe so unless you had like a like a mind reading like machine that you can put in and then it it, it it's like an adapter kind of thing or a translator yeah but you know what really suck though if you're constantly reading everybody's mind at the same time like you're walking down new york city and everybody's voice is in your head That'd be that'd be no. in, insanity. No thing. Yeah, that would drive you insane. But could you choose when you mind read, or or is it like happening automatically all the time? Oh, well, I would prefer like a, a man, like a like a a home homing system. I could read this person's specific thoughts. Hopefully, not everybody's. Like if you death stare them. Oh God. Like I'm death staring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what's going on. Here. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to get uh, inside the mind of that cute girl at the counter by death staring her and not breaking eye contact. <laughs> on to the next one. On to the next one. Good, good, uh, good, good call. So, our next question is: What is your all-time favorite fictional character and why? So most people usually think of a character because it has something to do with them. It reminds them of themselves. So this is a good question if you really want to get to know what kind of person a person is. What kind of things are they interested? What uh, what makes what what interests them? So this could be a video game, a TV show, um, anything. Who is that fictional character, Brett? We haven't heard from you in a bit. Or if if you want, it could also be a celebrity. It could be a real person too. A fictional character, right? Character, character. Mm. Yeah. So like TVs, movies, anime, mo- uh, anything, video games, books. If you read books, who reads books anymore though? I mean, Mission Impossible. Ethan Hunt. He's he's a good. So why him? I mean, him. It's it's it's. I don't know. It's just like. It's like he's that he's that spy. That gets. That gets assignments, you know, and it's just the way it's delivered. Then he goes out and then he just does the assignment and there's a whole plot to it. I don't know. It's just him. It just matches. You know what I mean? It just it just works. Like, do you think he's funny? Do you think he's cool? Like, what is it about him specifically that, that you're like drawn to? It's just, it's like it's it's just, it's his own character. That's that's what it is. It's his character. I like his character. I mean, yeah, it's cool, but it's more. But like, who wouldn't exactly describe it? It's just I don't know. I can't find words to describe it. It's it's it's. I don't know. It's it's like there's a certain character in him that 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 you know. I actually like about it, you know, yeah. All right. So what about you, Shoelace, Mr. Shoelace? Fictional character. I'm going to have to go for... Uh, because I feel like fictional characters... You know, I, I, I know exactly what I'm, what I'm thinking. Rick Sanchez... Rick Sanchez. That's a that's a good answer. So why why Rick? Because he he literally like he can just do whatever he wants, like all the time. Like, Very interesting. He, pick. Nothing is stopping him. He's just like, you know what? I could go for some, uh, I could go for some pizza right now, but the pizza shop is closed. What am I gonna do? Teleport to a random to a parallel universe 
where daylight saving time doesn't exist. Collect the pizza from the counter and then go back. Man could invent pizza all over again if he wanted to. That's a good point. So anything, anywhere, not a care in the world. Yeah, that's Th so cool. I that'd feel. be the life. But also, like, Rick Sanchez is, like, miserable. True. And, like, extremely depressed, so, like... Is that... So, is that relate to you in any way? Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. That's, uh, that's not good. Um, hey, at least, uh, I don't know, Rick Sanchez can do whatever he wants. You can do whatever you want on your podcast, man. That's, like, your your parallel world you can i don't know you can do whatever you want you can say whatever you want that's not offensive you can think of any topic you want it's your show you got full power to it you're the one holding the reins so in a way you do have some power yeah but uh, it's an interesting answer rick sanchez so my answer would be i have like i'll make them very snappy but I have two answers. There's one character who I love because he reminds me of myself. And one character who I love because he is nothing like myself. Uh, so the one, so the first one would be, his name is Brooke from an anime called One Piece. So on, on the offset, you look at him, your first impressions are, he is a walking, talking skeleton man. He is terrifying. I want nothing to do with him. He's spooky and scary. I, I no thank you. So, but then when you actually like talk to him and you get to know him, you're like, oh wait, this guy is actually he's really funny. He's really he's goofy. He's interesting. He's not just like this scary man who will kill you. He's like making skeleton puns and he's dancing around like a like a like a goofball, and like he's actually really fun to have around. He's an interesting person once you get to meet him, and he's also um kind of like give he kind of gives off those introverted vibes. He's been he's kind of a lo lonely soul. Um, not very popular, but he's interesting in his own right. He's 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 a, he's a cool character. And my second pick, uh, who is nothing like me, who is and if everything is the Chad I wish I could be, but I am not. His name is uh, Gyro Zeppeli or Zeppeli. It's a, I think it's an Italian name, and he's like this super like cocky flamboyant like. Uh, horseback racing cowboy dude from the 18th from the 19th century and like he he's always doing unconventional things he's always taking risks doing wild things he's like a wild card and like he's he's an he's a compelling character because he's constantly like talking down to other people like he's better than them and nine out of ten times he is he just kind of gives off those vibes that he is the one in control he he, he is the master and like he he just he, he styles on everybody, and he's funny, too. So that's my answer. So our next question is, if you could switch lives with any person um, that you know personally in your life, who would it be and why would you want to switch lives with that person? Do I, do I become them, or, is, or do we switch bodies? You s I guess you switch, you like switch bodies. You live in his life. Okay, so that would be more like a, a curse on a person oh. than... Brett's stepping out for a bit. That's cool. That's okay. Okay. So I'm going to say Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos? That man's a supervillain. Yes, but I can switch into his body and then... And, but do oh. I get to switch back or am I like permanently Jeff Bezos? Uh, <laughs> here for for this hypothetical I'll give you the liberty of switching back. Okay. I would go into Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I would become him. And then I would be like uh, and then I would I would find myself. So I would put myself which is Jeff Bezos in my body in a cage. You'd cage Jeff Bezos. I would cage Jeff Bezos, but Jeff Bezos is in my body. And I am Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and I would basically, like, like, uh, like, I guess, interrogate him so that he can give me, like, the passwords to all his bank accounts and whatever. Whoa. Because if I become Jeff Bezos, I'm not going to have access to his money because only Jeff Bezos 
knows what's the password to his bank account. So I'm gonna I'm gonna need access to the bank. And uh, I take all that money. And then I I I build with that money. And then I bring bring it all. And then and then uh, I'm gonna move. And then I'm gonna put Jeff Bezos back to to uh, my house. And then I'm gonna move somewhere like very far away, like in the middle of nowhere, like maybe a survival island. <laughs> and I would transfer all the money to myself, and then switch bodies. Now Jeff Bezos is in a survival island, and I'm back to my normal life with infinite wealth. That's a good idea. Yo, you just snatch all his money. And and also, like, Jeff Bezos, like, I'm going to fake his death. Like, oh, no, uh, uh, he went on a flight, and then it disappeared. Where did Jeff Bezos go? But he's just suffering in a survival island as a purgatory to conform his sins. Meanwhile, I'm rich. That's a, that's a, that's a lovely idea. <laughs> yes. Wait, why did I say a lovely idea? That honestly, I'm more evil than Bezos if that's the case. Yeah, man, you're gonna dump the poor man. Well, he's not a poor man, so far from it. But you're gonna dump the man on an island. I think that's a fitting end for Bezos. Um, personally, I don't even I don't even know how to tackle this answer, but I'm kind of interested in this in this this Jeff Bezos route. Um, if I could if I could swap with the man himself, uh, Mr. Rich and Bald, I would. Pay my my employees what they're worth, not like peanuts. Cause the man can, he's a billionaire. He he has insane wealth, and he, to my knowledge, does not pay his employees very well. So I'd give them all lovely, like high paying paychecks that wouldn't put a dent in my insane wealth, and I would live luxuriously as a nice, you know, non slave owning company, which is Amazon. That would that would be the dream. What would you say, Brett? If you could switch lives with anybody or Jeff Bozos, if you prefer. I don't know. I'd have a switch. I'd have to keep my own life. You know? I mean, we, sure, being a millionaire and all that, you know, or a billionaire, I mean, that's cool. But... My own life just feels original, you know what I mean? I get that. So, you're content with your life currently. You don't want to screw over big-time billionaire Jeff Bezos and free his slaves. I mean, if he has slaves. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm, I'm kidding. Nah. No, 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 that's, that's a good idea. That's cool, though. You're content with who you are. Also, this just in, we are in major trouble because the computer has <laughs> turned off and now it's logged on and we don't have the information and all our questions are on the computer. So we are a little stuck. We're 45 minutes in. We're so. 45. You know what? That's that's true. We don't have to go with all 10 right now. We had like a decent you five, know, six. Let, 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 let's me ask some yes. questions. I, I want to know I want to know your questions Uh Mr. L Mr. P Shoelace. Okay, here's a very, like we've been asking all these questions about, uh, about like what would you do if you had a superpower? Well, how would you switch your lives? But now we're on to the serious question. Serious question, big time questions. All right. And this question is going to be serious. Very serious. And 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 it's going to be dark, so it's going to be a different mood. Ooh, all right. Um. Wrong one. Anyway. Nope. Wrong. I want. I wanted to play the scary. Yeah, sound the effect. spooky. I know exactly the one you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Nope. You it's, know what? Forget about this. Whatever. Try pink. Try pink. How can we improve our school environment? Never. That is not it. Okay. Anyways, what I was gonna say is, if you knew, like you, 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 you saw your future, and you know. That two weeks from now, you did. Whoa. Like, you're going to die. No respawn. There's no way to prevent it. No matter what you do. Like, it's inevitable doom. Like, all, only yourself. Everyone else gets to stay alive. You got an illness. And you got you to gotta, you gotta die. Not really an illness. Like, you're perfectly healthy. But just in two weeks, 
Your heart like, will just stop. For some whatever reason, you're just going to disappear and die. Like like a Mr. Me Seeks when you fulfilled your task and you just poof. Pretty disappear. much. Like, <laughs> your, your life is going to end. You're n- there's no coming back. What would you do within those two weeks? That's a very good question. And that was actually close to one of my questions that I just remembered now. It was, it was what, is the, what is at the top of your bucket list? So these questions can go kind of hand in hand. So what would you do before you die is the question. Um, I'm very curious to hear what Brett's answer is for this. I told everybody what's, I told everybody what I know, and uh, I'll give up all my secrets, all everything I know, everything. You'd all share that. all your wisdom. All that, and then I'll drop dead in two weeks, and then that's what it is. So you, uh, you, you have access to secrets that if you spill them, you're going to die? I wouldn't say that, no, but I'd say there are some things I don't want people knowing. There are some things that I can't tell people, and there are some other things that I just choose not to tell people. So That's cool. Yeah. I hope these are not uh, things that endanger you or others, but I, you're a respectable man. I, I, I'm sure whatever you got, it's, we all got our own secrets. And yeah, we all yeah. have that. So. We, we all got something. That we're secretive about. So you wouldn't want to do anything luxurious before you die. Nothing. You seem to be a very like you're very content with what you have. You're a very down to earth kind of person. That's kind of what I'm getting so far. Yeah. Okay. It's not not a lot of people I know who are like that. Um. So if I could give my answer. My my number one thing I'd want to do or. One of the many th- wacky misadventures I want to have on my last few days is I want to go hug my favorite animal. And that would be flying all over to the Arctic Circle and hugging a seal. A I wa- seal? Yes, a seal. They're like these lovely, uh, voluptuous, fluffy, warm creatures who just love you. And, and they, they're really funny looking and they're cute and warm. And I'd love to hug one. And, okay, picture this. You you just had a long day from work, okay? You're all tired, exhausted. You see this nice round bean bag. You just, you just want to lie into it and just sink into the bean bag and drift off to sleep. But what if this bean bag was sentient, it was warm, and it loved you? And that is what a walrus is, basically, minus the tusks. I would want to just bean bag sink into a walrus and hug it. And that's how I would spend my last few, like, remaining hours of my life. Just walrus deep in... What? <laughs> um, just sink... Just hugging a walrus is, is, what I, is what I meant to say. Okay. Like, like, a, like a bean bag. Just chilling and drifting off to sleep. And watching the aurora, the aurora borealis. I imagine they have that there. That's actually aurora, aurora australis. Australis. Aurora borealis is in the North Pole. Oh, is it? I I don't know if things can survive in the North Pole. I mean, b- the North Pole, as far as I'm aware, is pretty much like dead because of global warming. And Antarctica, I believe. There's no life there, or maybe some plants, but I could be wrong. I, I doubt there's plants, because all the animals there, they don't eat plants anyway. There, so. Well, so in some places, though, I do know, I think, where, like, polar bears, that, like, icy region, there are, like, re- that there are special plants that survive really cold climates that do exist. There are a few of those, I believe. There could be. There could be. I'm not, not, an, an, I'm not an expert, so I don't know. Nah. So, what would? How would you spend your last remaining days? What, what kind of wacky things would you get into? Honestly, those last two days are gonna be very f- full of existential dread. Existential dread. What a way to spend it. And what I would do is, I would get a notebook, and I would write down all my ideas, like everything on my mind, everything I've ever thought of write it all down and then give my ideas to people who so that they can make the ideas happen in real life and then and then sell all my clothes and all my equipment and s- just sell it all 
and then get put all that money to charity, and then I would book a flight to like Trinidad, and I would live there for the next two weeks, and uh, I would just live on my own in the jungle, just live the not wild life. And just run around naked, <laughs> explore, like just be free for the last two weeks of my life. Be one with nature. I don't want to spend my last week living with people. I want to be one with nature, as you said. Yo, what if like um, on your last few days, let's say you don't just like, okay, this is important. Do you just like me seeks disappear or do you just like leave behind a, a, sh a you do you just like like normal people when they die let's just say uh there's a timer like a time bomb in your body oh it explodes you just explode gruesomely Jesus. and like it's like a balloon explode boom and uh it's like a spaghetti sauce everywhere kind of thing jiminy christmas um i was thinking of just like a silent I thought like okay, if if I could if I could just like die and then there that I am like, I would I would want to like you with, with your walrus like that walrus is not going to survive the impact. So oh no! Yeah, what you you the would be poor walrus. You would be terrorizing the walrus. Oh no! I would traumatize him. Poor guy, man. He's just like having a having a lovely night, just snuggling, and then he wakes up and there's spaghetti sauce everywhere. But it's not spaghetti. Oh no! Poor walrus. I was going to say, like, if I could just die peacefully, I would just, like, crawl into a tree and then feed that tree. But instead, I would, m I might violently destroy that tree. Well, well, at least that's in my lore. You can have your own lore. Okay, in my lore, I just go peacefully. Uh, okay, okay, last, like, remaining hour, or I get, like, a high-speed jet, fly to the jungle, die in a tree, and then have that tree just live off what, what is left. And maybe I will, like, be one with the tree. Potentially. Potentially. All right. That's how I would leave this world. Leaf. Yes. So I got a follow-up question, actually. I got a question to your question. A final question for Ask this question. Away. Okay, more realistic question. Again, this is a little dark, but uh, we'll get there. So... One day, if that timer thing happens or, or whatever, or you just died of natural causes, would you want to be, like, just buried, cremated, or, like, something interesting would be done? I want to die naturally. I don't want to be buried or anything like this. I want to just be in the forest and then die. And then, like, I, my, my body goes back into the soil. And, then, like, I feed the worms and the animals. It'd be an awesome idea. I don't care about humanistic deaths, like cremation or all that. Or building a giant, like, temple, like a pharaoh. Like, maybe I can have, like, a gravestone, but, like, only to represent me and not, like, my body's actually there. I can have a gravestone, like, so that people can put flowers or whatever, but my actual body is back into the soil where it belongs. That's, that's, that's perfect, man. Yeah, you'd be giving back to the earth. Very eco-friendly way to go. I I would not do that. I, I thought of this one cool idea. It, it's kind of meaningless because it, it doesn't really do anything for anybody, but I think it would sound cool anyway. So I would want to be cremated, and then, like, my ashes would be stored on this tiny, like, toy-looking boat, like a tiny, like, wooden sailing vessel, like, the size like, that could fit in your hand. And I just want to be put on the ocean and just, like, sail for all eternity. Just float across the ocean. Until a shark eats you. I don't think I don't think a shark would find ashes particularly tasty. He doesn't care about the ashes. He sees a moving object. He thinks it's a fish. Num. That's a good point, man. Okay, in that way, I I, I guess I I feed a shark. Except that shark would might die, so I might just kill a shark. That would not be a very good way to go. Maybe I could just like be in the ocean and feed the fish. The, the ocean's awesome. The ocean doesn't get enough love, yo. It just gets a bunch of plastic and nonsense. Oof. Yo, think about this, by the way. Okay, I, I have a little message for people who litter. 
Um, you might think, eh, okay, I'm just gonna toss this little piece of trash, a little plastic thing on the floor. Well, it's not gonna. What's it gonna do? It's no big deal, you know. It's on the forest. It's gonna remain in the forest. Ten million people do that. Yeah, let me tell you why it's bad. Okay, let's say. First of all, that little plastic bottle is not going to stay there for all eternity. No, storms and weather will happen. Let's say a, a big storm. The wind will carry that plastic, and that thing will travel miles, miles and miles and miles. And you know what's one thing that makes up most of the planet? The ocean. It's a very likely thing that by putting that little trash there on the forest floor, it's actually going to be caught by the wind, maybe it'll enter a storm drain or it'll just go right into the ocean. And that's how trash ends up in the ocean. So you're not just ruining, you know, that little piece of, gr of, of ground there with your nasty bottle. You're screwing over the ocean. And then, you know, you know what happens from there. Also, fun fact, because I, I, I mentioned this uh, uh, topic, I heard for some people, they can, like, make your ashes into a firework and just light it off. Imagine that. Nice. That is not nice for anybody below. That is not lovely. So, Brett, Yo. you got any response for this? Our last question. Well, regarding the thing with the ashes, that's um, that's interesting. I'll tell you that. So no, not not. Not not necessarily. What? We're we're still waiting on a, on the answer. Oh, I don't have much of an answer. All right, that's fair enough. You don't you don't gotta plan. You're still eighteen. Yeah. Realistically, though, like I wouldn't want to have a huge expensive thing. I just yeah. Maybe I'll donate my body to science. I don't know. There's a lot of things you could do, really. The best things in life are free. Indeed. So I guess that will cap off. Okay. W one final question Ooh. before we end this. All right. This is the most meaningful question ever, so oh, beware. I, I love meaningful questions. This question is so meaningful. It's, 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 it's the determination of everything. It's and this, this question goes as follows. And listen carefully. Do you like... Cows or goats? I remember this exact question. I know you're pro cow, but I gotta tell you, goats are slightly cooler. I love me some good goats. And right. goat goat cheese, best thing on planet Earth. Yum. Amazing. What about you, Brett? I am not a animal enthusiast, so I wouldn't know. Okay, what about uh, like cow as in like food or goat? Don't know. Um, I drink a lot of milk. Just movies. I think maybe say cow. Team cow. Let's go. <sighs> okay, I got one more mini question. Then this one, th this one depends on uh, on our very friendship, uh, shoelace. Th this is this oh, is a no. big one. All right. Are you a orange juice or a pulp type man? Do you enjoy pulp in your orange juice? But but by orange juice, do you mean like powdered orange juice? Nah, just just orange juice, man. You buy it from the store. Do you buy it with pulp or no? I, Are you an anti-pulper, Mr. Shoelace? I prefer without pulp, but if pulp happens to be in it, I would still drink it. That's a fair answer. What about you, Brett? Um, It depends. If it's like really cold, then I wouldn't mind the pulp. But if it's like, if it's not like freezing you know if it's just like maybe normal temperature or it's like you know maybe a little slightly above but like still so and like i wouldn't take it with pulp ever okay never. brett we will we will that's lovely but we will never understand each other brett because pulp is amazing i drink like 50 percent of my juice is pulp and i am happy with that i'm <laughs> <laughs> yo it's just part of the fruit it's good it's yeah. exactly it's it's awesome it's like the healthiest part it's fairly healthy. So I guess that, uh, that'll that do it for our our little podcast. That Thank was you for listening. This has been a good podcast. A pleasure. Nice to nice to meet you, Brett. Uh, not, nice, nice to talk with you, Brett. <laughs> I've already met you. Yeah. Nice to talk to you, uh, Yanni. Yanni. This has been Last Wave Radio. <laughs>
You're now listening to Last Wave Radio. 